I'm Dr. Orion Taraban, and this is PsychHacks, Better Living Through Psychology. And the topic of today's short talk is love has nothing to do with relationships. So I've made a number of episodes on both of these topics. However, I typically speak on each one individually since, to me, their mutual independence is an obvious fact of reality. But it turns out that what might be obvious to me might not be obvious to others. And when I speak about relationships as the medium in which value is transacted, I get a lot of pushback from folks in the comments. And the most typical type of pushback I receive is something like, well, what about love, Orion? Does love have no place in a relationship? Ugh, how mercenary. I guess we've come to the point that relationships are simply transactional these days, and that's why modern relationships are doomed, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Well, I'm going to respond to this critique in today's episode by arguing, as the title indicates, that love has nothing to do with relationships. Absolutely nothing. Let me explain why this is the case. Again, a relationship is the medium in which value is transacted. Since this is the case, relationships have rules. What is allowed and what is not allowed. Relationships have definitions. This is what it is, and this is what it is not. And relationships have compromises. This is what I will get for what I will give up. And this is because we need rules and definitions and compromises to, in effect, do business with each other, which is what we do when we transact value. However, love has absolutely nothing to do with any of these things. Love does not love where it is allowed. That's absurd. It has an imminent contempt for rules. Love does not restrict itself to a certain relationship format. It ignores every label and definition that attempts to constrain it. And love does not expect anything in return. So there is absolutely nothing to compromise. Expecting love to abide within rules and definitions and compromises is not only absurd, it cheapens love. It's the emotional equivalent of taking an animal out of its natural habitat and shutting it up in a zoo. And then we wonder why the animal seems so spiritless and depressed for all the benefits of its new arrangement. The other day, I rewatched Ang Lee's Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. It is a fantastic film, and for all of its action-packed martial arts sequences, it actually contains a really profound psychological message. So maybe I'll do an analysis of the film in a future episode. But with respect to our message today, the main narrative presents two parallel love stories, one of which is between Xu Lian, played by Michelle Yeoh, and Li Mu Bai, played by Chow Yun-Fat. These two characters did not get married, they did not cohabitate. They did not have children. They did not have sex. They did not buy each other flowers or cook each other dinner or go on vacation together. They did not talk about their feelings or define what they were or wonder where things were going. In fact, it would be very difficult to argue that they were in a relationship at all because what did they actually do with each other? But these two characters loved each other so much that they were inextricably bound at the spiritual level no ceremony required. Late in the movie, Li Mu Bai is poisoned, and he tells Xu Lien that he has only one breath left. In modesty, she averts her eyes and asks that he not waste his breath on her and instead use it to enter the heavenly realm as he had been trained. That's love. Love is wanting the good for the loved one without any regard for the self. Because the more you love, the less self there is. Love wants what is best for the loved one, even to the point of sacrificing the self. And Li Mu Bai replies that he would rather walk the earth as a ghost by Xu Lian's side than enter heaven without her. That's love. Love wants nothing but, in humility, if possible, to remain in the presence of the loved one. Everything else that you can get from someone else is worthless junk by comparison. Love wants only to remain in the presence of the loved one, but is willing to sacrifice even that for the good of the loved one. Now, before I go any further, if you're liking what I'm hearing, please share this video to someone who might benefit from its message. 
It's word of mouth referrals like this that really help to make the channel grow. You can also hit the super thanks button, which is in those three little dots in the lower right hand corner beneath the video and tip me in proportion to the value you feel you derived from this episode. I really appreciate your support. So this is why love has nothing to do with relationships. All the things that people want in relationships, children, commitment, respect, sex, lifestyle, excitement, security, love doesn't give a shit about any of them. Love doesn't care whether it gives everything and receives nothing in return, precisely because it is not transactional. But we would call such a relationship where one person gives everything and receives nothing in return an abusive or exploitative relationship. Love is given spontaneously as a gift at the pleasure of the lover. Expecting acknowledgement, let alone reciprocity, is just transaction disguised as love. And this is because love is actually a form of defeat. Listen up. Love is exaltation by virtue of the humiliated self. And that is why it is so very rare to see in the world today. And not even today, at any time in human history. And why the people who are out there looking for love don't really understand what they're signing up for. Love is the humiliated self exalted. In Casino Royale, when Vesper asks Bond about his armor, he replies, I have no armor left. You've stripped it from me. Whatever is left of me, whatever I am, is yours. Bond is naked and vulnerable and pathetic. He's humiliated himself. That's love. And that's also why when he learns of Vesper's betrayal, he puts the armor back on more securely than ever and functionally says, never again. Why? Because, to quote Leonard Cohen, I've seen your flag on the marble arch and love is not a victory march. It's a cold and it's a broken hallelujah. That's right. That's right. Love is defeat. And that's why it's strange for me to hear people saying they are looking for love and expecting to find it in a relationship. This is some high-level personal alchemy I've got for you. Love is the passage into a higher form of life through the gateway of the humiliated self. If you've never experienced love before, you're going to think that this is bullshit. But this is the true fact. And it's also true that this has nothing to do with relationships. We need to be real with ourselves. If we want things from others, if we need things from others, then we don't want love. We want a relationship. We want to do business. And I see nothing wrong with that except the rampant hypocrisy that wants to pretend that that is not what it's doing. And that is because wanting a relationship is the right thing to want if you want things from other people, and that is because a relationship is the medium through which value is transacted. So if you want to do business, get yourself down to the marketplace and prepare to barter with what you have to offer. And if you want a lot, be prepared to bring a lot to the bargaining table. And we can do this because, let's be honest, everything that you can get from another person in a relationship has a transacted value and can be bought. That doesn't necessarily mean bought with money, but it can mean that. You can buy sex. You can buy companionship. You can buy emotional support and childcare and home-cooked meals. You can even buy children through adoption or surrogacy. You can buy everything that can be transacted in a human relationship. However, you can't buy love. And that is because, paradoxically, love is valueless. Valueless in the sense that it is free and valueless in the sense that it cannot be bought at any price. On the other hand, if you want love, you don't need a relationship. Why? Listen carefully. If love is wanting the best for the loved one, you can only reasonably want a relationship with the loved one if a relationship with you is literally the best possible thing for the loved one. And let's be real, it probably isn't. It probably isn't. 
Wanting the best for the loved one, therefore, generally means sacrificing both the self and the possibility of a relationship. That's why Rick Blaine in Casablanca is the romantic hero par excellence. He puts the woman he loves on a plane with another man because he realizes it's better for her that way. Remember, love is not a victory march, at least not in any way we're used to speaking about victory. But in so doing, Rick finally succeeds in humiliating the self, which had been mired for years in cynicism and despair, and presumably attaining to something higher. At the very least, we suspect a new beginning is in store, the beginning, as Louis says, of a beautiful friendship. I appreciate that this can be hard to understand, so feel free to listen to this a few times if you need to. But the fact of the matter is, is that love has nothing to do with relationships, because on the one hand, love is valueless and therefore cannot be transacted. And on the other, love must, in any case, sacrifice the possibility of a relationship with a loved one, since the arrogance of assuming that a relationship with the lover would be the best possible thing for the loved one is antithetical to love as the humiliated self. What do you think? Please let me know in the comments below. And if you've gotten this far, you might as well like this episode and subscribe to this channel. You may also consider becoming a channel member with perks like priority review of comments or booking a paid consultation. As usual, thank you for listening.